What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu and in this video we're going to dig deeper into programming and we're going to look at assemblies and namespaces and see what they do and why you should care. And it sounds complicated but I promise I'll make it as easy as possible. So let's get started. So first we need to understand what these namespaces even are before we can make an attempt to compare them to assemblies. So let's talk about namespaces. What are namespaces when it comes to programming? Well, imagine for a second you're in a huge library with thousands of books. How do you find a specific book in the vast collection? Well, the books are organized into sections, right? In the world of C-Sharp, namespaces are like those sections in the library. They help you organize your code into logical, manageable pieces. But how do we create these shelves or namespaces in our code? It's quite simple. We use the namespace keyword. We can also create subsections within our sections, also known as nested namespaces. This is like having a fiction section in your library and then having a fantasy section within it. Here we have a namespace tutorial CU and within it we have a class program. In this code, our program class is neatly tucked away inside the tutorials EU namespace, just like a book placed on its proper shelf in a library. When we run this program, it prints hello world to the console. But the key thing to note here is that our program class is contained within the tutorials EU namespace. But what if our library sections have long names? It can be tedious to write out biographies of famous historical figures every time we want to locate a book in that section. Well, the good news is that c -sharp allows us to define aliases for namespaces. Here we've defined an alias tutorials for the namespace tutorials EU. Now we can use tutorials as a shortcut for tutorials EU in our code, making it more readable and efficient. When we run this program, it prints hello from tutorials EU to the console. Just as before, the important thing to note here is that we've effectively created a nickname for our namespace, simplifying our code. All right, so this seems to make sense, but let us see some uses for this now. Looking at this small sample, we've created a namespace called my company. So some sort of container or a box within which we've placed our employee class. The employee class then has two properties, name and department. Now, because our employee class is within the my company namespace, if we want to create an instance of the employee class elsewhere in our code, we need to specify that it's from the my company namespace. This is similar to saying that we're getting a book from a specific section in our library by writing my company dot employee. We're telling our program that we want to create an employee object from the my company namespace. Now let's see how this would work for us. In this example, we have a single namespace, my company, that contains a class employee. The employee class has two properties, name and department, representing the name of the employee and the department in which they work. We also have a method display details in the employee class. This method uses console.writeline to print out the name and department of the employee when called. You can think of this as an announcement on the company's public address system, saying something like, John Doe from the sales department, please come to the reception. Now let's use this class in a program. In the main method of our program, we're creating an instance of the employee class from the my company namespace, setting the name and department properties and then calling the display details method. This will print the employee's name and department to the console. See, pretty easy, right? But why did we use namespaces here? It doesn't really seem like it was useful in any way. Well, what if we have two libraries that both have a class named employee? So this is where namespaces really shine. But before we dig deeper, go ahead and check out our full stack web developer masterclass where you learn Angular and ASP.NET and how they are connected to each other. It's a self-paced online course that teaches you in-depth ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and even C-sharp software design pattern. We offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, but I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a developer. So go ahead and check it out. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Say, 
we have two namespaces, company one and company two, each with their own employee class. So two different sections in our library, each with a book named employee. Now, if we want to create an employee from company one, we'd specify that we're getting the employee class from the company one namespace like this. And if we want to create an employee from company two, we'd specify the company two namespace. Now, if we want to see how this goes, we can do the following. In this example, we have two separate companies, each with their own employee class. This is like having two companies in the same office building, each with their own employees. Each employee class has the same properties, name and department, and the same method display details. But notice that the display details method in each class prefixes the output with the company name. Let's see how we can use these classes in a program. As you can see by calling display details, we're able to see in the console output which namespace each employee object comes from and their respective details. So by using namespaces, we can have classes with the same name, but as they're in different namespaces, our program knows exactly which employee class we're referring to when we create an object. All right, now that we learned about namespaces, it's time to move to on to the second part of our tutorial, assemblies. Well, don't worry, we'll continue with our library analogy to keep things simple. We know you guys love these. Remember how we talked about the library and its sections? Now think about the whole library building itself. The library contains all the books arranged in their respective sections. An assembly is everything that makes up a .NET application. It could be an executable file or a dynamic link library. They contain all the information necessary to run your application. This includes the types you've defined as well as metadata about the types and the assembly itself. Assemblies are a key part of how .NET applications are packed, versioned and deployed. Every assembly in .NET has a version number, which forms part of its identity. This version number is crucial in managing updates and dependencies within your application. When you update an assembly, you typically increment its version number. This way, other parts of your application or other applications altogether that depend on this assembly can identify which version they should be using. In essence, assemblies play a significant role in the structure and evolution of your .NET applications. They provide the foundation upon which your application is built, while also offering flexibility and control over versioning and deployment. So then, to recap, just remember, namespaces are like the sections in a library, helping you organize your code and assemblies are like the entire library building, serving as the building blocks of your .NET applications. I hope this explanation has made these concepts clearer for you. Ideally, it would now be time for you to use what you have learned here today, and you can do so by following one of our many other tutorial series on our channel. Keep learning, keep coding, and you'll master these concepts in no time. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more programming tutorials. I would also love to hear your thoughts and questions, so please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Happy coding!